One is known for his creativity in the film and theater industry, and the other is known for his R&B singing. Now, if you were thinking EGOT winner Mike Nichols and R&B singer Chris Brown, well, no, not them. Hey, everyone. Uh, today, I am going it alone. I'm flying solo to bring you the behind-the-scenes look and discussions from this year's Calgary Expo. From April 26th to April 30th, we had the privilege to uh, attend one of the largest pop culture conventions in Canada, the Calgary Expo. The event was a haven for all things geeky and nerdy, with thousands of fans coming to celebrate their favorite movies, TV shows, comics, and so much more. During the time there, we had the opportunity to speak with some of the talented and dedicated staff behind the scenes who make this incredible event possible. We also had the pleasure of chatting with some of our biggest names in the entertainment industry who graced the Calgary Expo with their presence. Now, due to our limited capacity on this show to record interviews gorilla style with our camera, all of our interviews were conducted via audio only. While it may be disappointing, we were still able to connect with some amazing individuals and get their thoughts and insights on the event and the industry as a whole. We are hoping that next year we will be bigger and be able to bring you much more content, but also conduct interviews using our audio and video equipment. So, Sit back, relax, and get ready to hear some incredible stories from the Calgary Expo as we bring you exclusive one-on-one -on -one interviews with some of the most exciting and influential figures in the world of pop culture. This is No, Not Them. First off, we're going to be starting off with the Public Relations Manager for Calgary Expo, Alex Kincott. Here's our interview with her. For Calgary Expo, how's it gone? Uh, this has been an incredible weekend. Um, we've been really sort of overwhelmed with how enthusiastic the fans have been. We know to expect that, obviously, and it's why we do it. But this has been an incredible turnout, um, exactly what we were hoping for. And then I think as much as you can plan to see that kind of excitement and joy, um, it's a totally different thing to experience it in person. So I think everybody's feeling pretty happy today. Now, this is the second expo post-COVID-19. Are you seeing numbers rise? I know we are still, as of recording this, on the last day. Numbers are still trickling in. But are we seeing increases over year to year? Absolutely. Um, when we started to look at coming back after COVID-19, we, you know, we had a limited edition show, which was really special and intimate. Um, still did really well, and, and that was exciting. And then we had a our first show back after you know at full scale in the spring that turnout was really exciting and uh, really encouraging for this year so we were expecting a big year this year and we got it um we had a sellout day it's been many years even pre-covid since we had full sellout days that was extremely exciting let me start again okay uh, it's been many years since we've had a, a full sellout day, so that was really exciting. Um, and now uh, we're kind of looking ahead to, to when the Stampede Park renovations are complete. The transformation of this space is going to be incredible for the city and um, and really incredible for our fans because we're going to have a, an amazing building to fill and, and, and more growing to do. It seems like every year bigger names are coming this year we had hayden christensen we have bonnie wright we have uh voice actors from all genres unfortunately some people weren't unable to make it due to scheduling conflicts but also due to a airplane let's just say that what does that mean to you to see more and more high caliber actors wanting to come to calgary expo the calgary creative community um has attracted incredible talent uh without us you know they the last of us ghostbusters um it's put calgary on the map in a massive way and so i think it's it helps our case when we approach people like Andy circus and david harbour to say hey do you want to come to western canada we promise we have amazing fans uh, they know calgary they're familiar with our creative community 
They're excited to come here. That's made a big difference. Um, the success of Calgary, the word has spread in the industry. It's made a big difference. So it's really exciting to see that pay off. Um, the guest lists have always been good this year. I think they're really good. And we've been really excited to see fans interact with those with those big names that are on the billboard. Um, and it's been very gratifying to meet those people and just hear from them how blown away they are by the fan experience that they're getting here and that our fans are so kind and enthusiastic, um, really respectful and also just um, special. They're, they're coming with great questions and, and lovely interactions. And so the word spreads. And I think the fans are really to thank for that. What are you hearing from the fans though? Because you're probably hearing from the celebrities who are here, the voice actors who are here, the panelists who are here. But what are you hearing from the people who are here? The Calgarians, the Albertans who are taking time out of their busy day to come down here and celebrate fandom in all its glory. The lead up to the show, I think, was the maybe the most unique. I think whenever you're at the show, you sort of experience the same thing. And there's a sort of collective buzzy joy. Uh, but I was really excited for this show in the lead up, you know, as the names were coming out and as the announcements were dropping, I felt an incredible amount of positivity on the feeds um, that I hadn't experienced in a long time. I think after COVID-19, the entire world is looking for safe places to celebrate what brings us together and and positivity and community and that's what Calgary Expo is and always has been and the fact that the word is getting out about that and more people are feeling uh, included in this world has been really lovely besides rest and relaxation after tomorrow what's on the future for Calgary Expo can you give us some hints of if it's going bigger and better in 2024 or is it still just trying to get through the next 12 hours before everything closes well, tickets go on sale today for next year, so um, I'm happy to say there's no rest. <laughs> we, I, and I'm cool with that. We're um, we're just as excited now to get started on the next year. To be honest, there's conversations happening today about we, what we loved and what worked well and how we want to make it even better for next year. Um, that's really exciting. This job is never boring. <laughs> we're we have the best job in the world because we get to bring happiness to people. That's we're so lucky to do that. Um, conversations are already starting. Plans are in the works. We're working on next year. Next year, I think, will be our, our last year in this layout because we are going to be anticipating 2025 in a whole new center. So um, next year will be uh, hopefully bigger and better version of what everybody loved this year. And then the year after that, the possibilities are endless. Thank you so much, Alex. Thanks for having us. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Alex. And now to our first celebrity interview, our one-on-one -on -one interview with Sarah Natocheni, who is an American actress and voice actress and also director. Natocheni began her career as an actress in the early 2000s and since has lent her voice to a variety of animated characters. She is perhaps best known for her role as the English voice of Ash Ketchum in the long-running anime series, Pokemon. In addition to her voice work, Nat Jenny has also directed and produced several short films. She continues to be a prominent figure in the world of animation and voice acting. Here's our interview with Sarah. So, Calgary Expo, how's it feel to be here? I love it. It's so much fun. Everybody's been so sweet, and the city itself is gorgeous. So. Is this the first time being in Calgary? Yes, it is. So you've probably met a range of people from different backgrounds, from different genders, from different social economics, so, uh, ages. How does it feel to be able to touch so many people with your work? Um, so I actually grew up in an environment like that. I'm from New York City. And uh, to, to know that the work that I do affects people of all of those different backgrounds is actually the most special thing about the work I'm doing. I cannot believe that I got this lucky. Now your big fame is Ash Ketchum. Yeah. Unfortunately, it has come to an end. How does it feel to put a chapter of your life behind you now? Well, hopefully it's not the very, very end. I, yeah, I, I, I've accepted it as, as, as inevitable change, as we all do. Um, but I do have hope that he will come back in some form. Even if it's not with me, that's okay. But I, I hope he comes back in some form because he's, uh, you know, he's been a staple in people's childhoods and, and people want to share him with their kids and their siblings and, and they'll still do that. But um, it's okay. I'm okay. I cried a lot in the beginning and uh, now I've accepted, you know, 
What does it mean to you to have made an impact with one amazing character who has spanned not only my generation, the generation below me, but generations above me, and made that impact that people will forever know who you are, and you've made yourself a part of the voice acting lexicon of <laughs> the whole world? I gotta go. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, not trying to make you blush. I know. I try not to think about like the, the, the grand, the grandness of it all. Um, it, I do feel a sense of responsibility, and I and I'm so honored to take on that responsibility because kids do come up to me, and and they are fans of this tenacious character, this kind, tenacious, lovable character, and I want to embody that when I meet them. So I, I'm always trying to encourage kids to be the very best and do their best work, and you. You know, aspire to be something great, even if they're not good at it now. They can work really hard and achieve, achieve, achieve. Yeah, and I and I want to, you know, be a be an inspiration. Last question: What's next? What does Sarah have for the future now? So many things. Some things I can't talk about. Um, Tokyo Revengers season two just came out. I'm Yuzuha in that, and uh, I'm writing my own film about a voice actor who lost her job after 20 years. Sound familiar? <laughs> Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Our next interview with, is with George Newbern, who is an American actor and voice actor. He is probably best known for his popular TV shows such as Scandal, Friends, and Chicago Hope. Newbern has also lent his voice to several iconic animated characters, such as Superman in Justice League and Sephorthia in Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. In addition to his on-screen work, Newbern is also an accomplished stage actor and performed in various productions on and off Broadway. Here's our interview with George. George, um, welcome to Calgary Expo. How's it feel to be here? Uh, having a great time. Thank you for having me. First time in Calgary? First time. Yep. How's it feel to be on Canadian soil in Cowtown with the Calgary Flames? Well, I'm from the South. I'm, I'm very familiar with Texas, so I feel it feels a little like Texas. So I feel at home. Um, you have become part of the lexicon uh -huh. of voice acting in the world with your roles, no. with your contributions to the uh, animation world. Uh -huh. How does it m make you feel to know that you've impacted so many people with the roles you've played and portrayed on screen? Uh, it's a, it's lovely. I, I, I've done mostly on camera things for movies and television, but the my animation work for was Superman and Justice League and uh, Final Fantasy and uh, these characters, and then anime and other things. Coming to conventions is great because you get to actually meet people. But in film and TV, you don't ever really bump into anybody. There's no. Occasionally, you'll people will tell you that they enjoy your work, but this is sort of one-on-one -on -one interaction, and it's lovely. Yeah. It's really so, what does it mean to interact from somebody of your standpoint of, and your gravitas? Because you are a well-known brand in Hollywood, in the world, to come here and hear from people who you've impacted with your roles, if, with your video games, with your animation, to sit here and listen to them talk about what you've meant to them. It must get, humble you a little bit. Oh, it's it's, it's really really neat, um, especially. With animation, people just they hear your voice and they're looking at you know the the rendering of the of the character. So there's a part of them as opposed to on camera where you can see the live action character. People are hearing the the the, the voice actors and there's more of your imagination at play, and it becomes timeless. You know it doesn't age. Whereas on on camera things that you can see unless the animation is goofy. I think the animation stuff is a little more timeless and and can last longer in people's minds. Now, prior to sitting down with you, I had a chance to chat with your fellow colleague, uh, Susan, yeah. and I talked about the role of AI that's been coming up right. recently, yeah. especially in the voice acting yeah, community. Terrifying. It terrifies me, honestly. It's terrifying. I, I, did, I don't know what to, I don't know what it's going to do. I, it's, it's kind of freaking me out. How do you expect it to go? Do you expect people to hopefully want to hear actual humans or are you seeing a more change of pace whether it be through that AI uh, chat GTP lens that people are doing? I don't know. I don't know the answer. It, it, it's gotten what scares me is that it's gotten very good. It's, it, uh, I do a lot of audiobooks as well. I narrate a lot of audiobooks and, and I'm hearing a lot of the voice simulation and 
it, it sounds good. They're able to modulate and make emotion. You know, it sounds like there's, you know, emotional uh, calibration in the in the speech. So that worries me as a, as a live human and not a computer. Uh, I think there'll always be some things that the computers can't do, but uh, you know, in the commercial world, the, the AI has taken over so many of the voiceover spots for voiceover for any number of things. So I think it's coming. It's definitely coming, and it's going to take a lot of jobs away. So what's next for you? Is there any voice acting career, uh, jobs in the future that you can talk about? No, I mean, I've auditioned for a bunch of things, so I'm waiting to hear on some. And then, um, like I say, I'm in the middle of narrating probably five or six books at the moment. And I did a TV series about a month ago that should be out on a streamer channel called Pure Flix. Yep. Uh, so that'll be out. Um, and then other than that, I'm just auditioning and taking vacations. And I make olive oil. I have a ranch up in California, and we make olive oil there. So. Ever want to go back to Superman? I'd love to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we did a multiverse and then a game about probably six months ago, so I always feel like I do one or two or three a year. Some iteration of it, you know. Thank you so much, George, for doing this. And now our interview with Susan Eisenberg, who is an American voice actress best known for her work in various animated series, including, but not limited to, Wonder Woman in Justice League and Justice League Unlimited, and one of my favorite shows growing up in college, Viper, on the popular WB Kids show, Jackie Chan Adventures. She's also a voice actress in many, countless video games. Eisenberg has also appeared on screen in various TV shows and film. Here's our interview. So, Susan, I want to start with the first question. Welcome to Calgary Expo. How's it feel to be here? I am very thrilled to be here. Um, it, you know, it was a short little flight, and so far the people have been lovely and friendly and kind, and I'm overjoyed. Is this your first time in Calgary? Yes, I was in Edmonton about six years ago, but this is my first time in Calgary. So, you have had a career in voice acting, and you are. I would say part of the lexicon of the voice acting community in this co country, in this continent, in this world. How does it feel to have impacted so many people with your work that you've done in your career? Well, I mean, I think it's humbling. I, you know, you mostly it's humbling because you hear that you were part of somebody's childhood and oftentimes in a very profound way, you know, people will tell you about a difficult childhood where Justice League was something that gave them comfort. Um, so that's, you know, it's just very moving and very touching. And I, the fact that the sh people are still talking about the Justice League, um, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're as giddy as the fans are about the show. We are, you know, we knew, we know now how magical it was. And we're right there with the fans and in, in our appreciation of the show. So when you were creating the Justice League, did you know then what you know now? Did you know that it was going to make such an impact? Because that was in the generation, in the era when that cartoon style, that car that those characters were so instrumental in a lot of children's lives coming home after school or before school or on Sunday. Did you know then that it was making the impact that you're seeing today? No, because we didn't have social media. So we didn't know the impact. Um, and certainly it wasn't our creation. It was Bruce Timm's creation and Andrea Romano as the casting director and the vo voice director. And you know, the writers and the producers and the directors, I, I think it all starts there. And then I think we, we, are, we are so fortunate that as a voice cast, we just all liked each other. I think our voices really blended well together. And I think it resonated with the fans. You know, we people say that their introduction to these characters came from, you know, the show, but we didn't know that at the time. We know that now because we're meeting them at Comic Cons and we're hearing from them on social media. And there's a conversation between us and the fans. Um, so that, that, no, we didn't know. We knew it was special because you saw the guest stars and you saw, you read the scripts. Um, but you didn't know that it would have um, the it wouldn't be the leg have the legacy it, it you know it has now and you didn't know that the longevity would be like it is it's it's you know you hope 
as an actor that you are part of something that is embraced by people and this is this is one of those things. You have probably met many aspiring voice actors in your time. What's the major advice that you give them? What's that one key point that you wish you would have known starting out that you know now that you pass on to aspiring voice actors and actresses? Well, I think I did know it because I I wanted to be an actor. So I think the most important thing is to study acting um, and to be comfortable developing a character and your imagi- developing your imagination. Oftentimes you're, you know, you, when you're doing video games, there's nothing in that room but you and your imagination and uh, a script, that's it. You don't have other actors to work off of. And so you have to create a lot of that for yourself and make that real for yourself. So I, I say acting is really important. Um, and I'd say what I would always tell people is don't give up. You know, don't be concerned with what other people are doing or um, how competitive it is or that celebrities are doing it um, or that you don't live in Los Angeles or New York or Chicago. You can live anywhere in the world and if it's your passion, then you have to do it. You have to try. You bring up a good point. You don't need to live everywhere, but... There's a lot of concern right now, and I'm, I, I'm not trying to throw you under the bus. I'm not trying to get you a gotcha question. It's not that. It's an interesting conversation that's been brought up lately is the role of AI has been changing the way that voice acting is sort of done and even challenging the normal roles of what voice acting is. How do you see that even hopefully not being a part of the future of these characters that people have come to grow and love? Well, it probably will be a part of it. It's already here, so it's, you know, there's no arguing that. But I think in terms of the emotional attachment to these characters, I think that, you know, as as actors and as people, as human beings, we bring an emotional component that I don't think can be replicated um, as much as they will try. And I think that the, I hope that the audience has enough of a connection um, to these people, to us, to the actors, to um, to still want us to do it. You know, I mean, other people voice Wonder Woman all the time, but there's a certain there. You know, there's a certain fan out there that says you're my Wonder Woman, and I hope that that carries through for all of us. That it's like, no, you're these. Ca- you, you know, I want you to be these characters. I want you to have the jobs. I mean, things are changing. They're always going to change, and I don't think we can do that much to um, combat it, although I will do my best to, to, to do it, to combat it. But I think that um, I, I just have faith in the public and I have faith in my audience that they, they want to see people doing what we do, the, what we've studied, what we've been doing for decades, what we've um, honed. It's our craft. And I hope that that's, I have a feeling that's very much appreciated by our audience. Thank you so much, Susan, for doing this. It's always a pleasure to sit down and chat with someone like, of your caliber and your background. I'm always impressed when people like you take time and talk to independent media. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for asking me. And now our next interview is with Ryan Colt Levy, who is an American voice actor and writer. He is probably best known for his various anime and video games, including Chainsaw Man, Demon Slayer, and Shaman King, to name a few. He continues to be an active member of the voice acting and writing communities and has won praise from colleagues and fans alike for his versatility and creativity as an artist. Check out the interview. So, Ryan, welcome to Calgary Expo. How's it feel to be here? It's extraordinary. It's my first time in Canada. So I am, like, already just having a blast. I'm over the moon. It is true what they say. You guys are outrageously kind. I have had more, like, thank yous, please, and sorries that don't even need to be. You know, like, everyone is so kind. The city's beautiful. We flew in over the the mountains, and it blew my mind. Like, the nature's already winning me over. I haven't had a proper coffee yet. So that will be tomorrow. I will make up for it. Do you guys have a shop that you suggest? Tim Hortons. Well, that's the like, that's the true, yes, of course. I feel like I have to go there just to like say I've, yeah. yeah. And it's gonna sound odd, but I'll say Starbucks. <laughs> when I was a kid, I actually, I worked 
uh, for that company for a very long time. So now it's like I get like nom flashbacks if I get too close to one. <laughs> so as someone who is in their first experience here at a Canadian expo, how does it feel to hear from Canadian fans who have been touched by your work and have been influenced by some of your great work that you've done on Chainsaw Man and other extraordinary work? Well, you're far too kind. Um, I try. <laughs> I, you know, it's legitimately overwhelming how cool everyone is. We did a panel earlier today, and I was expecting two people to be in there, and the room was packed, and everyone is so present, and, you know, you say whatever, you finish your sentence, everyone's clapping and just appreciative, and everyone I'm meeting at the tables, the cosplays are incredible, everyone is so polite and just so excited to be here and share this, you know, with everyone. It's, and I personally am a fan first as well. So to me, we're all just getting to be in this soup together. So it is, it is a gift, it's extraordinary. So as someone who's now on that side of the table, who is a fan as well, you must be talking to people who want to break into the voice acting industry sure. in here in Calgary as well. What advice would you give people who are trying to make it like you have and become part of the lexicon of anime in the world? Gosh, um, I mean, I, it's, well, it's, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I think it's so much of it first and foremost is just having a passion for acting and wanting to be a part of not even any particular project but just be a part of being an element of the story right like the way that I look at being an actor is it's like you're a piece of paint on a painting you know you are part of the thing that so many other things are coming together to make and more often than not in any part of this industry anime video games whatever we don't really get that much opportunity to, to be like, I want to read for that, or I, you know, so much of it is kind of what comes our way if we're lucky to read for stuff, and then we're even luckier if we end up booking it. But I think that ultimately, your passion and tenacity will will get you through anything because this job, there's way more no's than yeses, no matter who you are, you know. And so much of what's going to keep you going is your passion for the thing, and just being okay with the unpredictability of it all and not expecting something immediately from it. Preparation meets opportunity is everything. So just constantly, like whether it's finding a, a local class, a theater class, scene study class, um, film short films with your friends, do local plays, like anything you can do to just get swept up in the craft of acting and, and make sure you love it. Because it's the other part that people don't talk about is you're professionally vulnerable, you know? And a lot of people think the job might just be you know going up and like everyone leaves you alone and you get to do whatever you want and it's it's you know you're working with different people all the time and you have to be able to even outside of the acting part can you write a good email can you talk to producers and all these di like there's so many different levels of it's so much not about us and I think that if you can be confident in who you are as a person if you are you know able to love yourself enough to go on this journey and root for yourself and put in the work that's going to get you so much further than just like the expectation so I think uh, believing in yourself is paramount. Last question for you. And this is sort of not a throwaway question, but it's always the important question. What's next? What's, got, what's on the horizon? Without being able to tell me everything, I'm assuming, because you probably have things in the background, what's next for you? Um, recently, some, some very exciting, very different uh, kinds of things that, than what people are used to hearing me uh, play. Um, outside of like the things I'm already working on, there's a lot of I have a lot of aspirations creatively. I want to get in the mocap suit and, you know, I want to work with Kojima one day. You know, like, I've got, I've got lofty goals. Um, but what's next, honestly, for me is just to, to keep getting to do this in any capacity. A any moment I get to act and be a goofball is a day of joy. Thank you so much, Ryan. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for joining us today on this special episode of No, Not Them. We will be back probably later on this month with Michael Nichols-Pate, our co-host. Uh, but until then, continue checking out our great episodes that we have. Check out this month's episode. And if you have any comments, any concerns, any stories you want Michael and I to discuss on No, Not Them, please send them off to us. Until next time, guys, keep talking. <laughs>